you're like me, you're always looking for a reason to go fast. The one thing that always gets in the way of doing that is money and my lack of it. So how do you go fast on a shoestring budget? We've already covered how to get a cool ride for under 10 grand, but this video is gonna be a little different. We're not gonna factor in looks, cool factor, reliability, fuel efficiency, or even handling. Just the cheapest way to go the absolute fastest in a straight line. Some cars might be stock, some will need a few modifications, but they all have crazy potential. Keep in mind that there are a million ways of going fast. These are just a few that we thought of. You probably have some good ideas too, so hit us up in the comments. And while you're at it, hit that like button. Hey, this episode is sponsored by Wix. Stick around to the end of the episode to check out the website we made with Wix's super easy to use tools. The website's called buffhorses.com. Yes, it's a real thing. Now, uh, onto the episode. Holy crap. From 2005 to 2007, the Cobalt SS had an Eaton supercharged version of the two liter Ecotech inline four, making 205 horsepower. You can easily throw a smaller pulley on there to get a nice boost in power. Don't be afraid to do that because Chevy actually offered smaller blower pulleys as a dealer option, so it's not that risky. The supercharged engine couldn't meet EPA standards for 2008, so for that year, the Cobalt went turbo. You can get up to 155 miles an hour. I found a tune online for 350 bucks that boosts a stock engine to 300 wheel horsepower in a car that weighs 3,000 pounds. You can get even more power with bolt-ons. I'm talking 350. The best part is that you can find Cobalts anywhere between four and $6,000. That's a pretty good deal. But you know what car has the same engine and is even cheaper? The Saturn Ion Redline Edition. Did a Saturn really make this list? It's got the same supercharged Ecotech from the Cobalt, and in my opinion, looks a little better. Luckily, these Ion Redlines are still around. I'm guessing because no one knew about them and they're Saturns. But we found at least five of them for three grand. And with a top speed of 144, this makes the Saturn Ion Redline the best value buy thus far. Holy crap. Next up is the Mitsubishi Eclipse, Eagle Talon, and Plymouth Laser. They're all basically the same thing. This car shouldn't be a shock to anyone. The first gen Mitsubishi Eclipse is a classic tuner, and for good reason. It's got the rugged 4G63 iron block engine that can handle a ton more power if you wanted to modify it, but does great on its own. This is the same motor that the Evo had. The 4G63T powered GSX puts out 195 horsepower. It's not a lot, but that's the point. It's typical for a stock bottom end to handle up to 500 horsepower. All you need to boost power fast is a bigger turbo and a fuel pump. Aftermarket parts for the 4G63 are pretty cheap and complete engines aren't a bad deal either if you're looking to swap. I will concede that Eclipses are becoming harder to find, especially the all wheel drive GSX, which can drive up the price. If you wanna save that cash, try finding any car with the 4G63 engine Cars like the fourth gen Mitsubishi Mirage and the second gen Hyundai Sonata. Imagine building a Sonata that ran tens. Let's look at a few cars that can be turned into absolute beasts with an eBay Whistly Boy. Hashtag Whistly Boy. If you get your hands on a first gen Chevy Silverado with the 5.3 liter Vortec V8 and a short bed, that's already pretty fun for a truck. But strap an eBay turbo onto that bad boy, you're looking at tens at the drag strip. No joke. Bring it up with Tony Angelo, he told me this. I say throw that sucker in anything it'll fit inside. Fords, Nissans, Miatas, I don't care. V8, the world. There are literally millions of 5.3s out there, which means they're cheaper than dirt too. The 5.3 might be the most swapped engine ever and the aftermarket for them is humongous. Speaking of V8s, I didn't mention the Mustang on my last list, but I will now. I have it on good authority that the fourth gen or SN95 Mustangs and their 4.6 liter V8s respond incredibly well to turbocharging. The SN95 gets budget bonus points too because most people think they're really ugly, thus keeping demand low. You guys know I can't make a list without putting a Honda on it. People sleep on the Prelude. Under the hood is the H22, which I think of as Honda's big block drag racing motor. I'm not gonna bullshit you, okay? Nice Preludes are gonna command a nice price, but you can get grody ones like this one 
for under two grand. Throw an eBay turbo on it and you've got a sick sleeper for the test and two nights at the drag strip. Shout out Famosa Raceway. The final car on this list is probably my favorite. It's the Dodge Neon SRT4. It's got a turbo from the factory, doesn't have a muffler, and it embarrassed Mustangs and Camaros all through the aughts. These things were rated at 230 horsepowers from the factory, but Dodge was actually underrating them. There are many reports of people dynoing stock SRT4s and seeing 230 at the wheels. You can find these things cheap, but don't expect them to be nice. Most of them are clapped out and modded to hell and back, but hey, turbocharger. If you really want to go off the beaten path, the PT Cruiser GT came with the same engine and made the same power. The only downside is you have to drive a PT Cruiser. If you can't stomach the PT, then look for a Dodge Caliber SRT4. It made 285 horses from a 2.4 liter engine and also came with a six speed manual. It's pretty sick. I feel like we're actually digging deep for these. To end my list, I have two honorable mentions that can be fast as heck, but are super, super duper hard to find. The first is the Suzuki Swift GTI, which had a turboed three-cylinder engine, but you can't find them anywhere. Believe me, I've tried. If you see one for sale, buy it, because it's gonna be a classic in like five years. The second is the Dodge Omni GLH. These things were tuned by Carroll Shelby himself, and the GLH stands for Goes Like Hell, which is how you know it's fast. Hopefully you got some good ideas from this episode. Now go buy something and make it fast. Fast car NASCAR. Thanks to Wix for sponsoring this episode of Wheelhouse. Nowadays, everyone needs a website, whether you're a graphic designer or an audio person or a dog walker like me sometimes. Having a good looking website can make you and your business look more professional. Luckily, Wix makes it super easy to build and maintain websites with their super easy to use tools and templates. Look at this sick Buff Horses website we made. It's called buffhorses.com. It's got all of the biggest and the buffest horses on the internet all in one spot. And guess what? We didn't even break a sweat making it. Wix does all of the heavy lifting, like reliable hosting to keep your website safe and secure, custom domains and mailboxes, email marketing, and more. All while giving you the ultimate creative freedom. Click the link below and get started building your website today. That's wix.com slash go slash donut media. That's wix.com slash go slash donut media. Thank you, Wix, for sponsoring Wheelhouse. I'm gonna go build a website. Thanks for watching Wheelhouse. I hope you liked this episode. If you did, give us a like, it really helps us out. Consider subscribing. Check out this episode of Wheelhouse right here and check out this episode of Up to Speed. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Nolan J. Sykes. Um, be nice, see you next time.